In 2009, LEGO released the Medieval Market Village for 100 bucks. This set now sells for $319 on average on Bricklink. And of course, the big topic has got to be the GOAT, but we'll talk about that later in this video. We now have the new release of the Medieval Town Square, but we need to see if the set is worth it. We're going to grade the set with our normal five parameters, and we're going to be able to give this set a total score out of 100. The grade we end up with is going to put the set into one of these categories so that you know my thoughts and opinions on whether it's a buy or a pass. So to be honest, my initial thought when they first announced and released the images of the set was awesome, they're bringing out the old medieval market village again, and they're redoing it. And at the same time, I was like, wow, that really doesn't look great. And it's really not what I was expecting. I couldn't really put my finger on whether it was the way the buildings were built or if it was the color scheme on the set, but I just wasn't impressed overall. It was the complete opposite feeling that I had from first seeing the medieval blacksmith, which actually blew me away. However, the buzz around the set still is and was immense. And you all voted overwhelmingly to have me review the set over on my Instagram and YouTube community. So here I am reviewing the set and what I was hoping is that over time while building it, some of my initial impressions would be proved wrong and I would feel better about the set. So jumping into the build experience, you're gonna get 25 total bags and two manuals. You're gonna build two separate structures, one for each manual. In manual number one, you're gonna start off by taking a trip down medieval lane and getting some facts about the set. There are three different structures in the first manual that are all hinged together and that makes it nice and easy to display them in multiple ways. You're gonna build the first four minifigures in manual number one, which we will look at here shortly. You're also going to build several side builds to fill up your town square in the form of a wood chopping post, hay baling wagon, but no horse or ox. That's a miss in my opinion, especially since the original set came with both. You're also going to build a storage post, wood lathe for shaping wood, and this wood made chair, which has the blueprint sitting over here on the table, which I thought was a pretty awesome touch. You're also going to build this cheese and baked goods stand. There's seven different types of cheese on this stand, and you're going to see a lot more cheese as you move throughout this set. Let me know if you can figure out how many total pieces of cheese are in this set. The center structure made of stone is relatively simple. There are two floors with the bottom being the carpenter shop. It's mostly empty so that you can place some of the side wood build elements into the shop. The roof comes off this structure for easy access to the top floor. Up here you're going to find a few carpenter supplies. There's a trap door which really has the feeling of an attic pull down access with the wood steps attached. You can let the trap door down on the outside of the building by turning this knob. There's also a pulley system on the top floor which can also be controlled on the exterior by rotating this lever to pull objects up and down. Pretty clever. There's a stickered sign on the front of the building showing the carpenter shop logo. This is a sticker and talking about stickers, you're going to get 18 stickers in all, which I would say is not too bad. You're also going to notice this cardinal perched up here, which is the first of 13 animals that you're going to find throughout this set. Three bees, two birds, a cat, goat, squirrel, frog, bat, fish, crab, and turkey. The fish, crab, and turkey are unfortunately already prepared for dinner over at the inn. And yes, in case you were wondering, I did Google search to see if bees were actually animals and not just insects. To the right of the carpenter's workshop, we're gonna find the tapestry shop. This is definitely my favorite of the three. I do like the look and feel of this building better with the centerpiece being the main tapestry art piece that was just completed. Little fun fact, this tapestry is actually a reference back to a popular jousting tournament scene from the 1978 Lego model 375 castle. You're also going to see some colored spools of thread, a needle on the wall, and a stove over here on the right. No second floor on this structure, but you will find a nice small garden outside with those bees and a honeycomb. The third structure in manual one is the farmhouse, and at the entrance you're going to notice this stickered flag with, you guessed it, cheese. Lifting the roof off the farmhouse, we again are going to find all kinds of cheese being made. The fact is, I'm just crackers about cheese. And you have this nice little cat drinking some much deserved milk for keeping all those mice away from the cheese. Outside the farmhouse, you have this nice enclosed area for the goat. And yes, you heard right, we did get a new goat. More to come on this. There is a nice brick built water trough. One thing that I really liked is the fact that they brought back the old dark green pine trees, which definitely gave me some nostalgia from my childhood. All in all, the first three buildings were nice. They were fun to build, but to be honest, they did not blow me away. Way. The last part of manual one is going to be this brick built tree. There's that small frog down here, mushrooms, some water. You can see multiple posters attached to the tree, which is my favorite part of this side build. First, we see a wanted poster for the infamous Wolfgang. And then next to that, we see there's a sale going on on the goat. Was this Lego anticipating a drop in value on the original goat? Who knows? And then lastly, we see a reference to Batlord, who just made a return in the CMF 25 minifigure series. 
As a whole, what do I think of this tree side build? To be honest, I don't really love the look. It's built a bit weird in my opinion, and I understand a tree is green, but I just don't really love the really bright color scheme green. I think they could have made it a little bit more realistic. Let's shift over to manual two. This is where things start to get much better in my opinion. We're gonna build the last four of the eight minifigures here. This building is gonna be two different structures hinged together, which can open and close depending on your preference for appearance. First is gonna be the broken axe in. I really love the axes and helmet for the logo right up front. Looks amazing. You have a nice cobblestone entrance as well as this nice side building signage and a hot pie up here in the upper window. The main floor on the inside is the tavern. You have a key in the door, a whiskey barrel on the side, which I think looks pretty good. You also have a nice chess board over here for some competition and a loot sitting on the seat, which definitely brings those medieval vibes. Right above the tavern is the kitchen. You have a stove, a bunch of food that's being prepared and some utensils up on the wall. And hold on a second. Is that a piece of cheese up on the shelf? The third floor is the tax collector's room. He has a bed, a small desk. You're also going to find a cup up here on the shelf and guess what? some more cheese. The coolest part of this room though has got to be the hidden pull-out drawer in the wall that can be found by pulling on this mounted sword. I guess the tax collector isn't as honest as we thought. What a surprise. Moving over to the other side of the structure, we have this beautiful stone watchtower. I love the look and integration of this watchtower into the other buildings. I also really like the building techniques to form this arrow slit window. Also on the outside is our second bird, which is this beautiful blue jay hiding behind all this foliage. I love the fact that the nest is made out of the beer element from the medieval blacksmith. The stairs on the outside lead up to the base of the tower where the knight can access his bedroom. Not sure why they went with a bright yellow bed. Doesn't look great in my opinion. The guard has the ability to climb all the way to the top of the watchtower using these steps and will encounter that bat in the tower on the way up. On the bottom floor, you're gonna find the Shieldsmith's workshop. This is one of my favorite rooms of all. You have the anvil and the shield making station on the right, and then on the left, you're gonna find a shield ready to be painted along with all the paint supplies. There's a small mini build that has an easel with one painted shield that was just finished and then another shield that's ready to go. The paint drops on on the ground in the workshop are red, blue, and yellow, while the colors on the shield that's painted are red, blue, and gold. So it would have been nice to see those yellow circles switch to gold to make things make a little bit more sense. However, the drip paint on the ground is a nice touch. You also have a picture up on the wall of one of my favorite minifigures of all time growing up, the Royal King from 1995. All in all, I really like the look and feel of this entire building. The full build did grow on me from my initial impression, but something is still missing. I think the color choices could have been better. I also don't really love the look of some of the roofs. It feels like a few of them aren't fully finished. I understand the thatched roof is reminiscent of the time, but if we look at the roof on the old blacksmith shop, that was just downright impressive. I'd have to say if any of them, the brown fully thatched roof looks the best. So where are we at on the build experience as a whole, and what kind of score should this get out of 40? It was a fun build. It had some cool nostalgia, which was nice to see because I had the nights growing up, but it just wasn't what I was hoping for overall. So so for all the reasons I discussed previously, I'm gonna give it a 30 out of 40. Good on the build experience, but not great. There's eight total minifigures in the set, which isn't a ton, but does seem to work well for the scale of the model. There's not much data yet on the value of the minifigures, but I am going to give you the listed average price on Bricklink as of this recording. First, you're going to get the carpenter for the carpenter's workshop. She's got a dual printed head, and I really like her tan coiled hairpiece and ponytail. Next is the peasant boy. I guess you could also call him the cheese maker or farm hand, but I really like the color scheme on the peasant boy and some of his printing. And I have to say he's doing a heck of a job in the kitchen making cheese. We've got the Tapestry Weaver, which is a relatively plain minifigure. We've also got Wolf Pack, which is my second favorite minifigure of the lot. Really cool torso printing, no leg or arm printing, unfortunately, but I do really like his hood and cape. The Queen's Tax Collector has got to be my favorite of all the minifigures. He looks great with his purple printed torso and pants. He's holding his tax book with a picture of a knight and a fountain pen for recording all the payments. I also like the Tax Collector because he adds a layer of dimension to the storytelling in the 
set, which is really cool. And he just barely nudges Wolfpack out for the most expensive minifigure in the set currently. We also have a Lion Knight's guard, which is very similar to the guards we see in the Lion Knight's castle. He has the same printing on his legs, but he sports a mustache, which is a little different than the other guards. We have the innkeeper, nice minifigure. She has the dress torso element. Again, no printing on the dress. And then lastly, we have the shieldsmith. Again, relatively plain minifigure. She has a paintbrush, paint palette in her hand, but nothing incredible. I would have really liked to have seen the forest men added to this set like they did with the Lion Knight's castle. That would have been a really cool storyline to add to the set. You've got the tax collector, Prince John. You've got the forest men, Robin Hood. It adds some depth and additional storyline to this set. So that would have been nice to see. But overall, all the characters are nice. They all fit the storyline nicely in the set itself. So I can't really complain. The total average value of the minifigures as of this recording is right around $100 or so on Bricklink, which for a $230 Lego set, that's pretty good. Out of a possible score of 15 on the minifigures, I'm gonna have to give the minifigures a 12. Solid score. So this is where I might get into some muddy water with some people. I do like the look and feel of the display on this set, and it will display nicely next to the Lion Knight's castle if you have it. But as I said before, I just feel like there's something lacking in the design and color palette of this set. I'm not a Lego designer, so I can't 100% put my finger on it. But again, I like the display, but I'm not blown away by how good it looks. The second structure definitely looks a lot better than the first, and maybe they should have gone more in that direction with the first build as well. It does get get better when it comes to the play functions. We've seen that there's a couple mechanisms that we can play with as well as a bunch of minifigures and animals. That gives the ability to create all kinds of fun scenes and storylines with the set. But overall, I would say that it's a win in the play function side of the build for the younger audience. So considering that I don't really love the look on everything on this set, and that's a big part of display. Play functions, pretty good. But overall, on the score out of 15 for display and play functions, I would give it a 10 out of 15. So on investment and resale, is this set going to do well on the aftermarket? It's still early to say how it's actually going to do and if it'll hold its value. If I were to compare this set to its predecessor, the Medieval Market Village, that set came in at around 264% in growth. However, that is over the course of the last 15 years. So that is a long time. I would say that the Lego Ideas Medieval Blacksmith is a better benchmark to look at. The original price on that set was 180 bucks. It retired at the end of 2023. But if we look at it, it's only retired for a few months at this point of this recording, and it's only risen at about 10% in value over the first few months. So that's not good. However, looking at it closer, it's still available at retail price over on Amazon, $180. So I think once it leaves Amazon for good, I think over the next three to five years that the medieval blacksmith will get up into that three to $400 range. Overall, I don't think this set is as good as the medieval blacksmith. It does have the good minifigures going for it, it does have the goat going for it. And since I'm mentioning the goat, let's talk about the goat. So in this set, we're getting a gray goat. The original goat was a white and brown spotted goat. Why they didn't bring that original goat back, I don't know, but I actually do like the look of this gray goat better than the original in my opinion. Now the original goat is valued right at about $75 still over on Bricklink as of this recording. We did also just get a new white goat. It's plain white. It came from the CMF 25 minifigure series. And that goat only goes for right around $7, $7.20. So nothing impressive there. The gray goat surprised me. That is actually going for right around $30 already on Bricklink. Granted, it is early, but I kind of have this feeling that it's on an upward trajectory and it's going to continue to rise. Will it get to $75? That's hard to say. As long as Lego doesn't release another gray goat and they lose the mold again for this one, then I would assume that it will continue to rise. Now with all that considered, does that make this a good set to invest in? I still don't think that this is better than the medieval blacksmith, just my opinion. But it is something that you might want to take a flyer on because you never really know what Lego set is actually going to do well and what is not going to do well. So this might be something you pick up one set of if you have some extra cash, maybe two if you can find a good deal with it. And then that way, if it does do well, fantastic. If it doesn't, you limit your losses on it and you're good to go. So with that being said, I'm not going to rate this overly high on investment. Out of a score of 15, I'm going to give it a 10. 
So now we're down, lastly, to the overall value on the set. Is it actually a good value? You're gonna get 3,304 pieces for $230. That gives us about seven cents per piece, which is good if we compare it to the Lion Knight's Castle, which sits around nine cents per piece. The Medieval Blacksmith is gonna come in right around eight and a half cents per piece, so all round looks pretty good for the Medieval Town Square. Solid cast of minifigures valued at around $100, plus the goat coming in at $30 and appears to be rising. That's $130 of the total cost right there, which leaves the build itself sitting at only around $100. I would say that's a solid value for $230 and you're getting a lot for your money. So overall score on the value, 12 out of 15 is what I'm gonna give it. Would be better if the build experience and maybe the look was a little bit better. So there you have it, a final score on the Medieval Town Square of 74 out of 100. So that is gonna put it squarely in the consider buying it category. Good set to buy, but if you don't buy it or don't have the money to buy it, you're not missing out in any great way.